Where are you going so early? You frighten the life out of me. I'm off to school. You mean you're trying to avoid your mum? Yeah. You should have told someone where Billy was hiding. I promised Andy. Well, I don't suppose there's much we can do about it now. Maybe. But Mum wanted to kill Andy for hiding his dad. Now she knows I was in on a secret. Why hasn't she gone ballistic with me? It's time yet. Well, I wish she'd get it over with. I hardly slept last night for worrying. Ever since I told her she's been really weird. And I hate it, Kel. What should I do? Well, for now, keep your trap shut. Morning, girls. What do you fancy for breakfast? What's up? Nothing. Just, um, toast me, please. You all right this morning, Donna? Yeah. Good. Because I got a little surprise for you. Well, all of us, really. What's that? Kelly, are you working late tonight? No. Good, because I want you to keep this evening free. Why? You'll see. Well, we aim to please. That's why I've offered you the guarantee. And uh, thanks again. We won't let you down. I've got the haulage contract from Darrow's. That's great. Mind you, knowing what the opposition was offering, I'm surprised he accepted our bid. Well, I dropped it to undercut Reynolds. Chris, the quote we worked out was an absolute rock-bottom price. It's a loss leader. You've just signed a two-year contract that's going to tie up half the fleet and lose you a fortune. Yes, but the key thing is it's another big contract that Reynolds has lost. He'll be bankrupt before the year's out. So you're prepared to lose tens of thousands of pounds just to put a rival out of business? I have got money. Reynolds hasn't. Once he's off the scene, all the lucrative contracts will come to us. And what's this guarantee you were talking about on the phone? Well, that's what swung the deal. If our lorries deliver late, Darrow's get 10% off their bill. You're insane. All it takes is a couple of motorway snarl-ups, the odd mechanical problem, and you're losing serious money. Look, I know exactly what I'm doing. I've worked in haulage before. You haven't. Maybe not. But I have worked with plenty of bankruptcy cases who thought they knew their business. <sighs> Ye of little faith. Stick the coffee on, will you? I'm parched. These have all been properly cleaned. Of course they have. I know you can get some lovely second-hand stuff, but what I'm always thinking is, did the previous owner have a horrible sweat problem? Well, I'll tell you what I'm thinking. When you'll shop at Otten? Oh, I'm going to. But I thought I'd check you out first. There's always a slim possibility you might have something suitable. Thanks a lot. Oh, no offence, but this is rather an important social function. And I do want to look my very best. You know, I felt a teeny bit guilty about replacing Trisha as Paddy's guest. And the more I've thought about it, the vet's ball isn't really her kind of thing. How'd you figure that? Well, these events do require a certain sophistication. You've got such a high opinion of yourself. Oh, no offence to Tricia, but she hasn't much conversation beyond men and makeup. Despite myself, I almost feel sorry for Paddy. Farmer Sugden. Mr. Sugden. Daniel Dean. Call me Dan. Gave me a ring about checking over your sheep. Oh, you're the vet. Oh, well, I hope that kettle's on. Have a nice strong cup of tea, two sugars and a few biscuits on the side. Well, let's take a look at the sheep first, eh? Yeah, sure. You're the boss. So, uh, I gather you've kicked Zoe Tate into touch. Well, I think that's between me and her. Well, I can guarantee you'll get no grief from Dean and Marshall. You're building up quite a reputation in the Dales. Is that right? Look, I'm not knocking Zoe and what's-his-name, but you've got to keep up with new research and techniques. I think they got a bit too cosy. Look, I'm a bit busy. Can we get on with it? Yeah. Like I say, you're the boss. Cheers, Josh. My little sister giving you an answer yet? Sort of, yeah. I mean, sort of. It's either a yes or a no, innit? She, um, she said she wanted to wait a year or so. That's a no, then. No, it's a maybe. And you really believe that? Come on, mate, she's popping you off. For goodness sake, cheer up. You'll scare away the customers. I don't feel very cheerful. Why are you so bothered about this vet's ball? It's hardly your sort of thing. I was invited. Benice changed staff rota just to spite me. What can I do? Make her stay and work. I'm sorry. Granddad. Mm.
Mm. You must be finding things really hard at the moment. What was your profit last year? I think that's our business. I'm just asking. It's chilling, really. I mean, what with the legacy of BSE and all this Euro nonsense? I've seen ten of my customers go under this year. The farmers, just like you. Yeah, well, thanks for coming to cheer us up. If you want my opinion, you should look at zero grazing. You know when you keep your animals on concrete and bring the feed to them. I certainly will not. It's not natural for the beasts. It's your choice. I mean, it would save you a lot of time and money. There's no point in being sentimental. Well, I don't think we need your opinion. Oh! Mm. No rest for the wicked, eh? Look, um, give us a call any time. I'm always on the Moby, and uh, nice to meet you, Farmer Sugden. Jack. Call me Jack. Come back, Zoe Tate. All is forgiven. Oh, no. No, it's a matter of principle. I'll persevere with Flash Harry for now. All right, sis. Want some lunch? No, I'm working through. Just what is Viv's little surprise? I have no idea. I see you letting Roy down gently. What you on about? I saw him in a pub today. He said you wanted to wait a year before thinking about marriage. I meant to. Oh, come on, Kelly. We both know why I didn't say yes to him. Don't flatter yourself. I'm trying to be sensible. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that would be a first. Well, just shut it, Scott. When are you going to get it into that thick skull of yours that what happened between me and you was in the past? Yeah, yeah, right. So you don't feel a thing for me, no? All right, I'll tell you what. I bet you under a quid that in a year's time, you won't even be going out with Roy. Oh, don't be so pathetic. Mm, that confident, eh? OK. You're on. Thank you, landlord. I, I don't suppose you could put a couple of these up behind the bar? Oh, well, that could be rather difficult. Our local vet's practice is just across the road. Ah, oh, Miss Tate and what's his name? Yeah, I've been getting a lot of work recently off their ex-customers. Yes, well, that's none of my business, and Zoe is an old friend. No, no, you're right. I uh, don't want to tread on any toes. My dad, the lock is off. Oh. Um, I, I suppose that means you'll be going to the vet's ball? Yeah, be my first one. Should be good for a spot of networking. Are you taking the wife? Me? <laughs> no, no, I'm still free and single. Really? Welcome back, Brett. What's this all about? I don't know. First, she thought she was going to call some family meeting about me and Andy, but she still seems really nice. She says to get ready for going out. Oh, that means it'll be a meal at the diner. What fun. Right, chop, chop, you lot. I've closed and cashed up. We're going out to the fair. Brilliant! Well, don't look so enthusiastic, you lot. We haven't been out as a family for ages. It's about time we had a little bit of fun together. I'm a bit old for the fair, Mum. Oh, give over. You used to love going on the ride, so don't get all cool and grown up on me now. I'm up for it. How about you, Kelly? If we must. Can Roy come? Yeah, more the merrier. I thought you said it was a family thing. Oh, come on. Roy's virtually family now. Can I drive? To your right. I'm going to have some drinks tonight. I think I've got to be fair for the fair. <clears throat> Knock next time. I'm guessing Darrow's gave you a ring. Yeah. They said some daft pillock with more money than sense was willing to lose a fortune on their contract. Oh, how you needed that deal. Not at the price you agreed. I'm happy enough. You'll be bankrupt before long. Now, that is where you're so wrong. Do you know how much I'm worth? As a human being, not much. I could buy and sell you ten times over. <laughs> Look, what is it you want? I've had enough of you and your games, so I've decided to destroy Reynolds Haulage. <laughs> <laughs> You've been watching too many tacky gangster movies, pal. I'm not your pal. 
I'm the bloke who's going to put you out of business. For good. Just look at that stitching. You don't get that quality on modern day stuff. Ben, can I have a word? I'm busy. Oh man, I've got to tell me good news to someone. Do excuse me. Have a look at the cheesecloth and think of summer. What? I'm going to the ball. This gorgeous vet was in the woolly, and Grandad, bless him, suggested he take me as his guest. Great. Now everyone's going but me. I can't wait to see Benice's face. She'll be green. No offence to Paddy, but uh, this Daniel was a bit of a trophy. Good looking, well off, and he drives a nippy little sports car. <laughs> I'm ecstatic for you. Oh, come on, man. You know how much I wanted to go? Shut up! I'm sick of hearing about this stupid vet's ball! Save your money. You might need it. You can be so conservative. And you can be so obsessive. This feud with Reynolds is going to cost you your business. Just relax. Drink your champagne. You can both forget about Reynolds. He looks like a very worried man to me. Why? What have you been up to? I paid our Mr Reynolds a visit. Not again. What was it about this time? He had a very lively and frank discussion. Why must you turn everything into a war? Not real. It's a cutthroat business. It's me or Reynolds. I'm not about to duck out of a fight. Boys will be boys. Well, what's that supposed to mean? Frankly, I get sick of macho males playing games with one another. You could actually try coming to some sort of agreement with the man. Oh, yeah. But it's much more fun this way. Keep your hands to yourself, Scott. Stop doing this to me, Kelly. So tell me again, Paddy, who'll be at the ball? A lot of vets. But I think you mentioned one or two title people. Well, yeah, local landowners. Daniel Dean. Hey. Oh, and me. What? I'm sure we'll be going in his uh, sports car. But you're working that night. I asked Grandad. He said him and Mandy could cover for me. I'd uh, show you my dress, Bernice. I want that to be a big surprise and all. Excuse me. I've got customers to serve. <laughs> that felt so good. <laughs> you do realise Daniel Dean's the bloke who's been pinching all our flaming clients? I don't care. I never mix business with pleasure. <sighs> the way things are going, this could be my last vet's ball. Because this time next year, I won't be surprised if the practice went out of business. Serves you right. What? 
Well, thanks to your lousy practice, I've ended up married to Butch Dingle. I'll put another record on. No, I'll tell you something else, Paddy Kirk. I don't have a rotten time at the ball. And since you go with Bernice, you probably will. My stomach's still up there. <laughs> you should have seen your face in that little picture. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to go wait for Storm Kelly coming off at twist here. Yeah? All right, see you in a minute, love. Look, I want you to forget all about Andy and his dad. I imagine my mum. No, let's just leave it at that. People do too much talking, and sometimes it hurts less if you try and ignore it. But I'll let you down. Shall we go on next? Don't you? Mum! No, I don't want to discuss it. We're moving forward now. This is what tonight's all about, the family being together. So come on. Enjoy yourself. Jack, what? Can I get you a drink? Save your money, lad. Whatever you say, I'm not going back to Zoe. Right, well, at least hear me out. It's too late. I've already signed with Dean and Marshall. Point, please, Alan. Do I should invite Bernice to my party? Oh, no, she's so uptight. Mm. Tricia? Yeah, she's a laugh. Ah, Biff and Cathy. Now, what can we do to get them two together? For goodness sake, Mr Matchmaker. Just let nature take its course. I think in this case, they both need a little push. Why are you so bothered? <sighs> Biff and Kathy get together. Biff leaves the house, I get the big bedroom. Mandy, I'm glad I've got you for the night of the vet's ball. Well, we'll still be fairly busy, you know. Oh, can't wait. Look, I've got nothing against Bernice and Trisha, but the thing about you is you're, you're such a good workhorse. I'll tread careful. What exactly do you mean by workhorse? Oh, no, no, don't misunderstand me. I mean, you, you, you've you got broad shoulders. I'll never apply for a job with a diplomatic corps. Yeah, well, I want to take my broad shoulders now for a break. And it's going to be a really, really long one. Hi. Good night. No, not really. Took a phone call late afternoon and Red House Farm no longer wish to avail themselves of our services. Hmm. Well, they never use this much anyway. Oh, get your head out the sands, away. All this business with Jack Sugden, we're hemorrhaging customers. A handful, Paddy. For goodness sake, stop overreacting. And I don't think it's a good idea to talk business when you've had a few. Don't patronise me! The way things are going, so I feel like getting smashed out of my head every night. OK, let's get this all out in the open. So we... I want the business to be a success. I've got a stake in things. This thing with Jack Sugden will soon blow over. Why don't you apologise to him? I've already tried to reason with the man. And a great success that was. So we, if I wasn't a partner, I'd have chucked it in by now. You'd be coming impossible to work with. Well... I can always buy you back out again, if that's what you want. Yeah. Maybe it is. Yeehaw! It's not our time, Dave. Eh? Well, get your hands off and stop! How long are you going to keep this road up for, Kelly? You don't fancy what you're mad about me! Shut up! Believe me, the feeling is more than mutual. Oh. Oh. What if Viva or Donna can see us? You're out of control, Scott. It's you, Kelly. You drive me nuts. Well, it stops now. Just keep away from me. I've had more rows with farmers and you've had hot dinners. And look, we're still in business. I really don't think you're taking this seriously enough. The word's spreading like wildfire about our incompetence. Zoe, I gave up everything into becoming your partner. My savings, Mandy. Yes. You should be thankful to me for that. 
You and Manny were just a disaster waiting to happen. Can't think of anyone more unsuitable for you. She was the best thing that ever happened to me! You don't mean that. Yeah, I do. It's about time I started to try and win her back. Well, you know my views. I'll just keep your nose out. You've got a cheat trying to lecture me on relationships. Excuse me? Well, you've hardly made a big success of your own, have you? I think you've said enough. That seat taken? No. You know what, Terry? At this moment, my life is like a bag of toenails. <laughs> Mine and all. I've got nowhere permanent to live. Dead end job and no future. Oh, no, I shouldn't moan. I'll go on then. There's not like a good waller. He's uh, just a stupid vet's ball stirring up so many old memories. This time last year, everything was hunky dory. Me and Paddy were together. We made a huge success of the vet's ball. Now, a year later, we're apart and I'm not even going to the do. Hey, can't be that much fun. Listen to a load of vets going on about chicken's feet and swine fever. <laughs> it's a really good night. It was magical last year. But I wouldn't mind, but Trisha and Benita just had an insult to injure it. They're going, I'm not. Boy, are they rubbing it in. Have you told Paddy about this? No. Don't him to know I'm bothered about not going to ball. Oh, you're a stubborn lass. I'm a dingle. Well, that was brilliant. And the night's still young. How about opening the bottle of wine? Can I have some? No. Oh, go on. Just one glass. <laughs> Oi. Why have you been upsetting Kel on that? I'm a brother. It's my job. Well, ever since we've got back together, you've been on us case. Now, what's your problem? What's up with you? Can you take a bit of ribbon? I just think it's strange that you two are madly in love, that's all. What do you mean? You're a sucker, Roy. She's using you. You don't have a very high opinion of your own sister, dear Scott. I know her. In fact, I know more about her than you would ever guess. No, is this another one of your stupid flaming wind-ups? You wish. Now, I know something about Kelly that'll blow your tiny mind. Oh, surprise me. What's going on? Oh, just your brother giving us grief again. Come on, Scott, tell us. What's Kelly's big, dark secret? Bottle opener, Scott. Wait for another time, eh? 